Hello! This video builds on a video I posted a few months ago. In the last video I talked about the not-so-secret weapon of ambient patching, reverb. In this video I'll go a step further and talk about using feedback to augment your ambient patches. Feedback by its nature is a more aggressive, atonal, and darker sound, so most of the patches we'll be exploring will be a lot more ominous and dissonant than usual. It's great stuff for sound design, adding texture to almost any track, and of course modern scoring. I'm going to stick to drones and ambient or background style patches in this video because it's going to be long and I want the focus to be the feedback itself and not clutter it up with sequences or melodies, so most of the actual patches themselves are going to be very simple, but like I said, these techniques are great to augment other patches. In the patch you're currently listening to, I'm using a matrix mixer. It's probably the most common way people patch feedback these days. But if you don't have a matrix mixer, no worries. I'm going to go through a bunch of different ways to patch feedback and discuss the pros and cons of some of those methods. I'll be using a bunch of different synths, reverbs, and setups, partially for fun, but also because feedback is very dependent on how and what you're using. Uh, one of the first things I almost always do when I get a new synth or piece of studio gear is to see how it sounds when you overdrive it. You can get some real surprising results. So I won't be posting detailed patch diagrams for any of these patches. Instead, I'll make general patch sheets so you can try these methods out with whatever gear you have. I don't process any of the audio in these videos with any compression or effects, unless of course I specifically mention it in the video. So what you hear is what you get. But in this case, I probably should have used limiters in a few cases. Admittedly, that was a bit of a mistake. Feedback can get out of control quick and it's easy to clip. So you hear some clipping in this video, and if you're listening on headphones, be warned, it will get loud at some point. I'll post an index in the description so you can easily skip around. But before we get on to the demos and tutorials, here's a little sample of some of the patches we'll work on in this video.
Okay, for this patch, I'll be using a Moog Mother 32. We'll start with a simple synth voice patch. I'll go through the setup, but if you don't have a Mother 32, you can do this with basically any simple synth voice. Okay, we've got a square pulse oscillator into a low pass filter and onto a VCA. In fact, in this patch, you don't even need the VCA because I'm just gonna leave the VCA wide open. We're just doing a drone. I've got a triangle LFO going into an attenuator, which is modulating the pulse width of the oscillator. This is all internally routed on the Mother 32, so no patching is required. Okay, here's how to set up the feedback. Synth voice out to the reverb. Out of the reverb, I'm going into a malt. Out of the malt, into the trunk line. Uh, trunk line is an old term that Moog used back in the day. Uh, basically, just think of it as the master output. In this case, the trunk line goes straight into my interface for recording. Okay, then another copy of the reverb output comes out of the malt into an attenuator or VCA. In this case, I'll just be using the VC mixer on the Mother 32. And then back into the reverb input. And that's it. Let's try it. Okay, I'm using an Eventide H9 pedal for my reverb. This pedal happens to have two ins and outs, so it makes it even simpler. Plug synth into input 1. Input 2 is for my attenuator on the Mother 32. Out 1 direct to the trunk line, and out 2 goes into the Mother 32 mold. For this patch, I'm using a Hall Reverb algorithm on the H9, really long 20 second decay, very similar to a Lexicon Digital Reverb. So patching out of the pedal into the mold, out of the mold into the second channel on the trunk line to keep reverb stereo, out of the mold again into channel 2 of the VC mixer, and out of the VC mixer back into the pedal. The VC mixer is acting as a VCA, and the knob controls the amount of feedback sent back to the pedal. That's it, let's try it. This feedback patch is as simple as you can get. We're going to go out of the synth into a mixer with an aux send, out of the mixer to the trunk, aux send out of the mixer to the reverb, and out of the reverb back into the mixer, not into the aux return, into channels that have sends. That's important.
Okay, so the Mother 32 has an external input as well as mix control. So why don't we try using that first? We're going to go out of the uh, Mother 32 directly into the pedal and back from the pedal into the external input. Unfortunately, this won't work, though. Uh, the external input is before the mixer in the signal chain. That's great for most things because it means we can use the filter to process an external audio source. But in this case, because what we really need is blend, we won't get any signal if we go past 50% on the mixer. So we'll have to try something else. So I'm going to use my little dope for performance mixer here. It actually is perfect for this sort of thing because it has an aux send and return. I've already got the mixer outs patched to my interface. Next I'll patch the aux send on the mixer into the H9 and out of the H9 into channels 3 and 4 on the mixer. I can't use the aux return if I want to create a feedback loop. I need to use channels that have a send, so that's why I'm using channels 3 and 4 and not the aux return. Lastly, patching the mother 32 into channel 1. All right, the synth voice itself is going to be pretty much the same as the last patch, but let's add some modulation. So I'm taking the uh, keyboard CV out and patching that into cutoff in. So that means the filter will key track the keyboard or the uh, sequencer. Next, I'll take the uh, triangle LFO and patch that into channel 2 of the uh, VC mixer. And out of the VC mixer, I'll go into uh, the resonance, the CV control for resonance. And that's it, another pretty simple patch. This time I'm going to use the uh, Shimmer Verb algorithm on the H9. It's kind of like uh, Eventide's famous H9 processor. It uh, transposes the reflections and, as the name suggests, adds some high crystal-like uh, shimmers to the verb. Cool. Okay, turn on the VCA, and I'm going to get the filter to self-oscillate, so cranking up the resonance. Hope that didn't hurt your ears. And I'll just find a pitch I like. want to get some harmony. Yeah, I'll go with the fifth for now. And I want the uh, fifth to come in and out like this, so that's what I've got my LFO set up to do. So I can bring that in and out if I want with the VC mixer. We can use some uh, internally routed pulse width modulation if we want, or change the LFO speed. And let's bring in the reverb and give it a go.
All right, let's take a break from uh, reverb feedback for a bit and take a look at filter feedback. For this example, I'm going to use my Behringer Model D, which is affectionately known as the Boog. I'll use the same reverb feedback setup as the last patch, so only difference is the synth voice. Most of the patching here is going to be done internally on the synth, but I'll go through so you can try it out on any synth. I'll be using two saw oscillators out to a mixer, onto a resonant low pass filter, and out to the VCA. Then I'll feed the output of the VCA back into the mixer, the external in on the synth, and it's as easy as that. All right, so I've got the reverb patch like I did in the last patch, so let's just hear this synth. Turn on the second oscillator and get it somewhat in tune, and add reverb. This time I'm using the black hole algorithm on the H9. Pretty awesome reverb. Yeah, listen to those tails, amazing. This algorithm has feedback as a parameter, so let's take a listen to that. Pretty cool, but it's not really feeding back the way I want, so let's use the feedback on the sends. Be warned, this can go crazy fast. So just go slow, and there we go, horror music. That sounds great. Cool. Okay, the whole point of this one's filter feedback, so let's turn off the reverb for a second. Those tails are still going. That's great. Okay, so I'm going to unpatch this from the mixer, just patch it into a passive malt, go back into the mixer, and out of the passive malt into the external input on the Boog. So now I've got filter feedback patch, just the same way you'd do it on the old uh, minis. Tune that up a bit. Okay, let's bring in the feedback. Be warned, this can get crazy. So depending on the feedback amount, we're getting different subharmonics. That's pretty cool. Now, because we patched this in after the VCA, the amp envelope will affect the feedback amount as well, so a key press will change the pitch. So I'm going to go for a full horror soundtrack for this one, so it's going to get ugly, as you hear. So now I'll show you how the envelope amount is affecting the tone. Okay, so let's add some reverb and do some exploration. I'm going to play with both filter and reverb feedback amount as well as a bunch of other parameters and just have some fun.
Now we're going to use reverb itself as an oscillator by getting it to feedback. This will work with any reverb that has a drive on the input. Again, it's a very simple patch. Out of the reverb into a malt, out of the malt into the trunk line, out of the malt again into an attenuator or VCA to control the feedback amount. And this time, I'll patch a filter after the attenuator before patching back into the reverb input. All right, so I'm going to use my IntelliGel Spring Ray 2 for this. So I'm using a malt cable here. I'm going to patch out of the um, output straight into the trunk line and grab another cable out of the output and into the um, mixer input on the Mother 32, channel 2, and out of the mixer into the external input on the Mother. So we're just using the Mother as a filter right now. And out of the filter output, right back into the input on the spring ray and that's all there is to it I'll just crank up the drive for now and turn it to full wet so like i said the mother 32 is just acting like a filter i've got the mix knob all the way up to external input and the vc mixer will control the amount of feedback cool well, it's clipping a bit I've got a solution for that, but first let's try it with some reverb. Good old lexicon plugin. Awesome. That is super cool. Okay, but let's try to sort out that clipping. Luckily, the IntelliGel Spring Ray has an effect send. So instead of using the ins and outs of the um, module, I'm going to use the effect sends and returns. And then the internal limiter should take care of most of the clipping at least. Turning up the internal feedback and leaving the limiter at about halfway. That is creepy. But the limiter seems to be working. That's great. So by playing with the cutoff, I can get the um, spring ray to feedback at different frequencies. Pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to patch uh, the keyboard CV out into the filter cutoff CV input. Unfortunately, it's not going to key track very well, but we can still use the keyboard to repeat different pitches, which is kind of useful. And I'll patch the envelope out into the CV control for the mixer. So basically the mixer is now VCA, so it will be triggered with each key press. Let's give it a go. So as you hear, it doesn't pitch track accurately at all, but that's okay because it's not what we're going to use this sound for anyway. Just a creepy, eerie sound. Great for sound design and spooky tunes. All right, let's add some modulation to this patch. Uh, we'll keep the basic patch the same, reverb malted to the trunk line and feedback path through a VCA and filter. 
Now let's add a sequencer. Gate out of the sequencer will trigger an AD envelope, which will modulate the VCA. Next, we'll take the pitch CV out of the sequencer and patch that into an attenuverting mixer. An attenuverting mixer is a CV mixer that can attenuate or invert CV. And we'll add a triangle LFO and patch that into the attenuverting mixer as well. And the summed output of the mixer into the CV cutoff for the filter. Okay, so let's put this patch together. So first I'm going to unpatch the keyboard CV out of the filter input. I'm going to use the subharmonicon sequencer, so I'm patching that into maths input 2. That will be my attenuverting mixer, maths. And I'm going to use the mother 32 triangle LFO and plug that into maths channel 3. And out of the sum output of maths into, I'm going to put it into a molt. So I might need another copy of this and out of the molt like we planned into the cutoff of our filter. And lastly, I almost forgot, I have to set up the gate. So we'll go sequence one clock out of the subharmonicon into gate input on the mother 32, which will trigger the envelope, which is already patched into the VC mix control from the previous patch. Just picking some random values now on the sequencer. Oh, one more little change on my diagram. I said I was using an AD envelope, but I've got the sustain turned on on the mother 32. So I'm actually using an AH D, an attack hold decay envelope. And I'll bring up the VC mix control, which is our VCA, so we get some sounds. And start the sequencer. Cool, this is sounding pretty cool already. Now on maths, channel two is turned up, so the uh, sequencer, the subharmonicon sequencer is affecting the uh, filter cutoff, so that's why we're getting the different pitches, but I haven't turned up the LFO yet. So let's see what happens if we do that. I think I need to adjust the VC mix a bit. And let's add a little bit more LFO. There we go. The LFO is going to cause a, a kind of a pitch smear. Let's try it a little bit more. Super creepy. I love it. Okay, well, let's add the subharmonicons oscillators itself into this patch just for fun. So I'm just patching VCA out into the mixer. And just going to go for a drone from the subharmonicons oscillator. So we're going to turn the um, VCA on by holding the EG button down and bring up some of the subs. Pretty gritty. That's nice. Okay, we're going to need some modulation for that drone, though. So we'll go out of the malt, which is our sum output of maths, into channel 4 of maths. And for now, I'm just going to reset the um, rise and fall on channel 4. So bring those back down to zero. And out of channel 4 into the um, CV cutoff in for the filter on the subharmonicon. And we'll invert our modulation. So the uh, subharmonicon will get brighter as the um, spring ray gets darker. Let's so add some slew to just smooth out some of those modulation changes caused by the uh, sequencer. There's another one of those big filter changes I want to try to avoid, so more slew, I guess.
Okay, that's starting to sound pretty good, but let's go a step further. So, I want another copy of this sequencer output. So I'm going to plug that into channel 1 of maths, out of the full wave of maths into channel 2. So our spring ray is still getting modulated properly. Out of the attenuated channel 1 into VCO2 pitch input. And we're just going to add a tiny little bit of modulation. So we're going for kind of a drunken vibrato on the uh, separate monica. There we go. Let's just do some fine tuning of our modulation in maths. A little bit less slew on channel one, the pitch sequence. A little bit more slew on channel four for the pitch sequence that's controlling the subharmonicon uh, filter. set up all this modulation we still have some good manual control with the filter and the VC mix knob so let's just experiment a little bit coming together but you know what I've got two spring rays and we've got a whole other sequencer we haven't used on the subharmonicon so wonder what happens if we double this patch okay give me a second while I patch this up quick I'm gonna make a slight change instead of using the VC mixer on the mother 32 as a VCA I'm going to use an IntelliGel quad VCA and quadrax envelope generator thought I'd try something different other than that, it's the exact same patch, but using two spring rays and the subharmonicon, again, as a drone and modulation sequencer. Get ready for some weirdness.
I love my H9 and all my other hardware pedals, but if we use a hybrid setup, all of a sudden we have access to a ton of amazing plugins and effects. Depending on what DAW you use, the setup may be slightly different, but the general idea remains the same. I'll be using a Moog uh, Subsequent 37 and Studio One for this example. We'll need an audio track and an aux or effects track. The synth goes into the audio track like normal, track output to your main output like normal, set up a send on your audio track to your bus. You've probably done that a million times. Put whatever plugin you want on your effects bus. I'm going to try out uh, Soundtoy's new Super Plate. Output of the bus goes to the main outputs as usual. But here's where things get a little different. You'll need an external send on your effects bus. Uh, most DAWs can do this now, so it shouldn't be an issue. Just select an unused output on your audio interface as your send to send the FX output back into your synth. And we're done. It's as simple as that. Okay, we're in Studio One. Going to go through this step by step. Just creating an audio track and setting my input. This is the input for the synth. Now I'll create an effects bus and just quickly rename it. And now I'll add my reverb plugin, and I'm going to use the new Sound Toys Super Plate. All right, I've already got my output of my synth patched in, so now I'm taking a cable and patching to the external input and setting a send to the same channel I just plugged into. And we'll get a sequence going. Okay, we'll add some reverb. Boy, that sounds great, but I'm going to go with the gold foil, which is a bit brighter. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, using the mixer and external input on the Sub 37, let's bring in some feedback. Sounds like a kick drum. Cool, just experiment with the filter and feedback amount. That sounds good, but let's try a longer decay time. Great, now we're getting more of a pad or atmosphere sound. I just love how dense this is, it sounds so great. Okay, just for fun, let's modulate the feedback amount. So to set the destination, all you gotta do is hold the mod button and turn the knob you wanna modulate. And for source, gotta go into the menu here, but I'll pick uh, keyboard tracking. So we'll get more feedback as the notes are higher. And that just sounds wonderful, just unearthly dense reverb. Super cool. I am clipping a bit, so I'm just gonna bring it down a tiny bit. Now, I'm gonna set this send to pre-fader so I can mute the dry signal altogether and keep it going through our send. So now we're hearing full wet. This way I can hear the clipping a little bit better and the amount of feedback. Oh, it's just on the edge. A bit too much. Bring it back a bit. And now I'll bring in our dry signal. Just a tiny bit. Great. Sounds pretty good.
Okay, I'm just going to detune one of the oscillators a bit. Great. Yeah, this is working out pretty well. I really like that. Okay, so that's a nice, easy way to patch a simple hybrid effects feedback loop. Definitely worth exploring more. So, no time like the present. Let's explore some more. I'm just going to change the envelopes here to a longer envelope shape and try the same sort of thing out with a drone and uh, we'll try some different modulation this time. Okay, nice long attack and decay on both envelopes. Great. Yeah, this synth just sounds amazing. So I haven't changed anything in the DAW. Uh, we're still using the gold foil and nothing's changed here. I'll just crank up the decay time a little bit. And now we're going to go with some over-the-top feedback. Beautiful. Sounds awesome. Okay, uh, this time I'm going to modulate the feedback amount again, but I'm going to use the amp envelope to do that. So let's take a second to set that up. Setting the modulation destination is easy, but setting the source can sometimes be a pain. So a little bit of menu diving, done. So the amp envelope will modulate our feedback amount. It's unipolar, so we got to find our low point. Just dial it in. Great, that sounds awesome. Okay, since we're already in the DAW, we might as well add some more plugins. So let's add another effects channel and just send our new Moog 1 sounding oscillator to uh, Eventide Black Hole. The Eventide Black Hole algorithm is actually used on the Moog 1, so we can probably get pretty close. killer but just for fun now let's turn off the oscillators and process the um, super plate with the subsequent 37 but still send it through the black hole
Okay, let's modulate the uh, filter slope. cool. I guess that does it for this patch. Hopefully this gives you some ideas for some uh, hybrid patching. On to the next one. Feedback patching entirely in the box or uh, with software only is even easier. We're going to use preamp feedback. Actually, I don't really want to use one of my hardware um, preamps for this, so I'm going to use just a channel on my interface instead this time. Again, we'll need an audio track and bus. And again, we can use any plugin on the effects channel. I'll use the reverb again. Output of the audio channel goes to the main outs. But this time, the output of the effects channel will go to an external out on your interface. That output gets patched into the input of the audio channel. Then we need a send on the audio track to the same output, which gets fed to the input, and there's our feedback. We can put whatever plugin we want on the audio track to process the feedback. Cool. All right, so I've already set up my two tracks. I've got an audio track and effects bus. Most DAWs these days won't allow you to create internal feedback loops, so we're going to have to do this manually. So first step is to set the input. I'm going to use Expert Sleepers 1 and 2, and my outputs I'm going to send to Expert Sleepers ES3 1 and 2. Now I simply just patch the outputs into the inputs. So I'm going from my Expert Sleepers ES3 into my Expert Sleepers ES6. You don't need an Expert Sleepers interface. You can do this with anything. Okay, to complete our feedback loop, we need to set up a send on our audio channel, and we'll send that to the Expert Sleepers ES3, which is, of course, the same output as our effects bus. And now you pick any plugin you want to process your feedback with. I'm going to use this channel strip by Softube because I've got a physical controller for it. Okay, I'll activate the EQ and slowly bring up our send to bring in the feedback. Do this slowly, because it can get loud quick. Yep, so it works pretty much the exact same as the, uh, oh, that's cool. As the patches we tried earlier, we've just got uh, more options using software, unless you've got a ton of hardware. Obviously, by using an EQ, we've got a lot more options than just a simple filter. Another bonus, of course, is you can automate this really easily if you want. using a modular synth VST instrument, again by Softube, on my return track. Set up the exact same way I did with the channel strip. I've got a stereo filter and two sequencers and slew limiters. This is almost exactly the same patch as the weirdo matriarch patch I did earlier in the video. The sequencers are modulating the cutoff of each filter, and I'm using the slew limiters to smooth out the sequencer steps for a smoother modulation. And each sequencer is being clocked by this uh, Vermona random rhythm generator. Pretty cool! Let me show you one more trick that I like to do. So for this, I'm going to use my Fab Filter EQ. I've got four bands set up, and I've used the little keyboard at the bottom to tune them to C, G, D, and an A sharp or B flat. And I've assigned the gain of each band to a MIDI controller. 
So now I can get diatonic feedback or even chords if I want. And of course I can put on as many plugins as I want to sweeten the sound. Feedback patching with the Matrix Mixer looks complicated, but it's really very straightforward. We'll start with our subharmonicon with a single pulse oscillator and two sub oscillators. They of course get internally routed to the mixer and then through a low pass filter. Out of the filter to an input on our Matrix Mixer. Out of a channel on the Matrix Mixer to the trunk. The other three outs of my Matrix Mixer are going to three different reverbs. The outs of all the reverbs are patched back into the Matrix Mixer. I'm using the effects loop on the second reverb, in this case an IntelliGel Spring Ray, out of the send of the effects loop to a VCA to control the feedback amount and then into a filter before returning back into the effects return on the Spring Ray. The first reverb in the patch is Immutable Instruments Beads. Beads is set up as a reverb with granular delay. A triangle LFO is patched into an attenuating mixer. The attenuated LFO is then quantized. The output of the quantizer is modulating the pitch of the granular delay. I'm using the gate CV from a sequencer, in this case it was the subharmonicon sequencer, to trigger the quantizer. Another copy of the LFO, this time inverted, comes out of the attenuating mixer and is sent to modulate the filter of the subharmonicon. Another sequencer, in this case a Mother 32, is clocking the first sequencer, in other words it's clocking the subharmonicon, and sending pitch CV to the subharmonicon. Lastly, I have a triangle LFO going through an attenuator and then on to modulate the pulse width of the subharmonicon, which is, again, internally routed. All right, let me walk you through this patch. This is my bare module stereo matrix mixer. I've got a subharmonicon patched into the top input, the output of mutable instruments beads patched into the second input, two IntelliGel spring rays patched into the third channel, and my Eventide H9 patched into the fourth input. For the outputs, channel one is my trunk line, channel two is the beads input, channel three is the spring ray input, and channel four is the H9 inputs. To start, I'll send everything to the trunk line in channel one. Okay, let's start with the subharmonicon. So I'm gonna turn the VCA on by holding the EG button. Okay, an F sharp, an F sharp, an octave below, and a D below that. And a really high F sharp, and a D, and another D below that one. Maybe I'll change that. Yeah, let's just go back to that D. Okay, so I'm going to um, just turn off oscillator 2 for now and just go with oscillator 1. So on my mother 32, I've got a triangle LFO patched into an attenuator. Out of the attenuator, I'm going to go into the pulse width of our oscillators. Cool, that sounds good. I think I do want that high F sharp, so bring that back in. And for filter modulation, I've got the LFO from my other mother plugged in to the cutoff of the subharmonicon. So that's all there is to our very basic but great sounding drone. Okay, let's take a look at the spring rays next. I'm using springs with short decay, so it'll be easier to hear this with a more percussive sound. Here's the subharmonicon dry. And with the springs. Boy, those sound good. 
Okay, let's try some feedback. So on the matrix mixer, I'm sending the output back into the inputs. Go back into the drone so we can hear it better. clipping so we got to be careful there. I've got the effects loop of the spring rays going into this mutable instruments blades uh, stereo filter. So by keeping the feedback low on the matrix mixer I can just go above the threshold with the drive on the filter. That way the clipping is taken care of for the most part by the limiter in the spring rays and I can push the effects loop pretty hard with the filter. I can use the cutoff, of course, to change the pitch of the feedback if I want to as well. Okay, let's check in with the H9. So I'm back to using my Hall algorithm with highs cranked. So this is going to be a very bright, out-of-this-world reverb with very long decay. Nice and sparkly. And let's hear what it sounds like with some feedback. So I'm sending the H9 back into itself. Oops, clipping. With the high frequency and decay boosted, you get a nice metallic feedback sound. Cool. All right, I'll send a little subharmonicon into the spring ray. And send some spring ray into the eventide. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Let's bring those all down for now. Still getting some tails, so I'm going to turn them down in the trunk. Okay, let's try beads. Wow, that sounds great. So beads is set up right now just as a reverb, and as you can hear, it's a nice, lush, warm reverb. Keyboard CV out is patched into the subharmonicon pitch input, so I can control the pitch of the subharmonicon with the mother. So let's get a sequence going. It's just a simple two note sequence, fourths apart. sounds good. Beads on its own is really all we need. But let's get some darker sounds and try adding some feedback. See what it sounds like. So we're getting a nice low rumble from the feedback from beads. Now if I hit the seed button on beads, we're getting some pitch transpose granular delay. repeats in the feedback we're really getting a nice dark ominous sound now the clock out of the subharmonicon sequence one is patched into stages which is acting as an AHR envelope generator which is triggering the seed button on beads and that is absolutely beautiful the triangle LFO on the top Mother 32 is going into an attenuator and out to a quantizer. I'm using IntelliGel Scales as my quantizer, which at the moment is just outputting perfect intervals. The output of Scales is going to the pitch CV input on beads and transposing the granular repeats. And that's the patch. So now is the fun part, exploring feedback and different balance on the matrix mixer. 
just going to jam out for a while. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something.